referrals given uh, by the uh, provider at that time of what, in regards to house rules. And would this um, provider also have uh, house rules? Yes, that's correct. They would have house rules. Um, that would have to be adhered to and there would be, while well, we noted that there would be um, a housing first low barrier approach, that doesn't mean that um, inappropriate or poor behavior would be tolerated. Well, if I recall, the rules included things like uh, you could not do drugs inside the home. I don't think it allowed smoking. I think they were allowed to have uh, pets, including dogs. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if there'd be a limit of if that's similar for this provider, those types of rules. Yes, I believe that would be the same. Okay, however, um, when the uh, community members asked about rules outside of the house, there actually were none. Uh, and it sounded like you, could, uh, you couldn't do drugs inside the house, but you could do them outside the house and at someone else, in someone else's front yard or backyard, um, and that there, that would not necessarily result in someone being removed from the, the house. I, I would say that, you know, to the extent someone was trespassing in another individual's yard, that that wouldn't be permitted. They would ex be expected to behave like other, um, you know, citizens in terms of observing property boundaries and the like. Um, we, so to the extent that they were conducting themselves illegally or inappropriately, uh, that wouldn't be permitted. But it would be like any other individual outside the home that wouldn't necessarily be programmatic. Um, that might be more part of the Alameda police jurisdiction, but I suspect there would be conversations had with the program director um, because they would be expected to be good neighbors like everyone else. But there were explicit rules in regards to what behavior would result in being kicked out of the house. Uh, and they all pertain to being inside the home. Do you all have any of the rules that uh, would pertain to this provider? And if any rules of behavior outside, do you have it in writing of any contracts? Uh, because that was something that was discussed before. We have not contracted with the provider yet, but we could take your suggestions if you had thoughts on that. Again, like I said, I think that there would certainly be requirements to be good neighbors, like you know, and not disruptive within the neighborhood because we do want to establish a um, good relationship with those around this, these homes. So I appreciate that. We did hear that from the community members um, in regards to their concerns. I want to also follow up in regards to um, the Main Street encampment that it still exists. Do you, uh, and it doesn't sound like the residents of these homes would uh, reduce the Main Street encampment. Is that correct? Um, I don't know that that's necessarily correct. Possibly if... Um, you know, well, uh, would you uh, excuse the interruption? Um, Interim City Manager Bowden, do you want to say anything about what the city is doing to address the, uh, the Main Street encampments? Yeah, there, there's a, a multi-prong approach for the Main Street encampments. We have, we have public works, community development, our police department working to try to manage the, the, um, the things that collect in the area, but to also connect people to social services and to move them in the direction that we're trying to create here with transitional housing and supportive housing. Uh, and, then, and then in the not too distant future, uh, we will have the, the bottle parcel and that will create the kind of opportunity that will really unlock um, unlock our, our options around, uh, around creating opportunities for housing for people in the community. It just goes beyond existing city housing stock. And so that's, uh, that is an, op uh, an opportunity that is in the not too distant future. We have funding for that now and we're moving forward with that project. So it, it is, it is multi-prong and we're certainly, um, we're certainly, um, uh, working on it on a regular basis. We do we do a cleanup every two months, or excuse me, every two weeks currently as well. Um, we're, we're going there twice a month to really make sure that the site is as orderly as possible in this interim period. Thank you, Mr. Bowden. And Ms. Maxwell, you were, you were answering the question and then I just thought that I would, um, you were, because the, the question Councilmember Harris Spencer posed was that, uh, the people in the main street encampments wouldn't be helped by this project. So I was just 
um, asking Mr. Bowden to share what the city was doing, but I didn't mean to cut up whatever else you were going to say. No problem, Madam Mayor. Um, I was simply going to say that um, every time I think that we create more housing opportunities, such as this one, it just creates more possibilities to get more people off of the streets. And so, you know, the fact that we would then have this opportunity and then Joey would be able to village a love, hopefully transition some of the individuals who had successfully stayed with him into this opportunity, maybe that would then create a new opportunity for some of these individuals to come stay at the Village of Love. So I just think the more options we have, the more we can flow these people through the various um, opportunities and systems that we've created. And I appreciate that. Over here, Spencer, yeah. Yeah, so I, I would still, so I think it's unfortunate that when I ask a question, I get interrupted and another question gets asked. I think it's appropriate that when I ask a question, I actually get an answer to my question. And then if you want to ask questions, Mayor, you can do that, but it shouldn't be interrupting me all the time, sadly. Um, so I want to go back. My question actually goes to, we have a Main Street encampment. It's been there, I'm sure, at least for over a year. And I appreciate there's a multi-pronged approach. However, at the end of the day, my question is, do we, and I don't believe that anyone has said this, it's my understanding that uh, Village of Love has its own population that it serves and that uh, the residents that have these concerns of having uh, the main street encampments to one side of them and the com the people that have made comments about, you know, these uh, people that live in, in this area that have called and have concerns, rest assured, they are very familiar with homeless people. They have homeless people that live, honestly, uh, within blocks of them and they do um, come very close to their properties, if not on their properties. Uh, so uh, in regards to the um, Main Street encampments, I don't think I've heard from staff that we anticipate that, that en those encampments will disappear. Do you have any timeline of them not existing there? Uh, uh, yes, uh, uh, Ms. Mr. Maxwell Bowden. and then Mr. Bowden or vice oh, versa. Oh, Ms. Mr. Ahead, Bowden, I defer, I'll defer to you. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, we will we'll pass the torch uh, back and forth. Uh, thank you, Mayor and Council Member, for your question. Uh, the homeless issue in the Bay Area is, is a significant issue, which is why we're talking about it this evening. I don't have a timeline for you for when the Main Street encampments would be completely not there anymore. But what I can tell you is that opportunities like what we're talking about create that that those you know those new services, those new opportunities to have people housed, and I think that between uh, this series of project or this project with the series of homes that are being discussed and the the um, the transitional housing site that we're talking about for the bottle parcel, Alameda will be in a much different position a year from now. Uh, than we are currently, which is we, we really we rely on on a, on a few service providers to try to connect people to resources, but we really don't have that many opportunities to put people into into a house or or shelter of some sort. And so um, we're we're just looking at unlocking new opportunities as we go. And I, I, in a year from now, when that bottle parcel is up and running, uh, the city will be in a much 